the Japanese government says it's taken a step forward on the long road toward decommissioning Fukushima Daiichi. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda held a news conference on Friday to announce that the nuclear plant's damaged reactors are in a state of cold shutdown. That means temperatures are below 100 degrees Celsius. For the nuclear power plants, the experts verified the nuclear power plants thoroughly to conclude that the cooling water circulates in a stable manner. And the temperatures at the bottom of the reactor and inside the containment vessel stay below 100 degrees Celsius. Hi, I'm Ernie Gunderson from Fairwinds. The first phase of the accident was when the nuclear reactor core lost its cooling. Now, you'll remember uranium atoms split. 95% of the power comes from uranium atoms splitting. But these pieces that are left over are called fission products, and they retain a lot of heat. When you shut a nuclear reactor down, a process that takes about two seconds, 95% of the heat stops immediately, but 5% of the heat can't be stopped. Now, that, as long as there's extra water flowing, is all you need to keep a nuclear reactor cool. The decay products created enough heat to boil off all the water, and the nuclear fuel collapsed. The pasta broke and is now a blob at the bottom of the nuclear reactor. That happened in about six to eight hours on Fukushima 1 and perhaps as long as 10 hours on Fukushima 2 and 3. So the first phase of this accident is called a meltdown. The second step in the process is something called a melt-through. Probably within a day of the, uh, of the beginning of the Fukushima accident, we were in the phase where nuclear fuel was melting through the nuclear pressure vessel. Now remember, the nuclear reaction has stopped. None of this is heat from the chain reaction, and all of it is coming from the nuclear daughter products. After about a day, Instead of about 5% of the heat coming from, from the nuclear uh, daughter products, we're down to less than 1% of the nuclear heat. So now we've got a blob that's left the pressure cooker and is now lying flat on the floor underneath the nuclear reactor. But the assumption is that the nuclear fuel lying on the floor has begun to eat away at the containment. So phase two is when it ate through the containment. Phase three is the beginning of what would, would ultimately become a China syndrome. At the bottom of the nuclear containment is about three feet of concrete and about two inches of steel. We're quite certain that the nuclear fuel has left the reactor and is lying on the bottom of the containment. The question is how deep into the concrete it's worked its way and has it broken through the steel? I don't think it's broken through the steel and I think it's perhaps as much as a foot or two into the three feet of concrete. But that does not make a China syndrome. The reason it's not working its way down any further is because the radioactive daughter products 
have, are no longer generating anywhere near as much heat as they did on the very first day of the accident. In fact, they're probably generating less than a million watts of power right now. Now that's a lot of heat. A million watts is um, 10,000 100 watt light bulbs. And you can imagine that that would generate a lot of heat. But compared to what was available on the first day, and the second day, and the first week, the amount of decay heat is very small. In addition, right above all this nuclear melted fuel is an awful lot of water. The water's at less than 100 degrees centigrade. It's not boiling. And what that means is that there's an enormous ability for that water to suck the heat out of the nuclear core as it lies on the bottom of the containment. And um, I don't believe that the nuclear core can melt down through the containment and into the water table. There's been all sorts of postulations about violent explosions from this. And again, I don't think that can happen because the amount of heat available, now we're almost nine months after the accident, is not great enough to create what's called a steam explosion. So the good news is, I don't think a China syndrome can happen. I don't think this core can keep melting into the bottom of the earth. And I don't think there'll be a steam explosion either. That's the good news. Here's the bad news. That nuclear core is in direct contact with tons of water. And that containment, while not leaking down, is leaking out the sides. That contaminated water is going into every other building on site. And there's literally thousands and thousands of tons of water in other buildings. That water contains radioactive cesium, radioactive strontium, and it also contains nuclear fuel. There'll be uranium in that water and plutonium in that water as well. We know for sure that that water is leaking into the groundwater and into the Pacific Ocean. So while it's important to know that we're not going to release the nuclear core directly into the center of the Earth, the problem isn't over. And as a matter of fact, the problem will last for tens, perhaps even as long as 30 years, because this contaminated water is in the basements of all the buildings on site. And not only does it contain cesium, that hangs around for 300 years, strontium hangs around for 300 years, but it also contains plutonium and uranium. And they have half-lives of tens of thousands of years. So the problem is, what do we do with all that water that's contaminated? It's already leaking into the groundwater. It's already leaking into the ocean. TEPCO is frantically catching it and putting it into tanks. But just today, TEPCO announced that they're running out of tank space on site. And eventually, they're going to have to release that, those tanks into the Pacific Ocean. Now, they'll try to clean up some of the isotopes like cesium but they have been unable to capture all the strontium. Strontium is a bone seeker that causes leukemia. So we're not out of the woods. We're far from out of the woods. It'll be 30 years before we capture all that nuclear fuel that's underneath that reactor vessel. And until then, it'll be surrounded with water that's leaking into the groundwater. I'll keep you informed as the situation develops. Thank you.